Good morning, and permit me to say how happy I am to be afforded an opportunity to offer brief remarks at this important um, intervention. The Ministry of Legal Affairs is an important strategic partner of the Ministry of Home Affairs in the execution of this important initiative. It is not a coincidence that the IDB is funding another initiative being administered by the Ministry of Legal Affairs under the title improvement to the criminal justice system. That initiative, along with the initiative that we are celebrating here, go hand in hand and are directed to the improvement of the security of our country, the security of any system, the security of any country must be concentrated towards the protection of the physical safety of the citizenry as well as their rights and freedoms. Under the criminal justice, the improvement to the criminal justice project, a number of initiatives are being pursued, have been pursued, and are being implemented, which are aligned with the objectives of this program. Monday, in the National Assembly, for example, we will be debating a series of bills, and some of them are directly related to and connected with this program. For example, both Dr. Ashley Singh, the IDB representative, and the chairperson of this program spoke about the softer side of the rehabilitative process in the prison system. We will be reading for the second time and hopefully for the third time at Monday sitting of the National Assembly the Restorative Justice Bill. That bill is intended to set up a body that will administer that act and promote and educate our country and our citizens in respect of a relatively new concept in our justice system, and that is restorative justice. Where the criminologists and the sociologists and the psychologists have done all the analysis and have concluded that the traditional and conventional punitive penal sanctions that we have been administering in the world for the past century have not been as effective as it should have. And therefore, they are exploring newer, more modern concepts of a softer nature, directed more to the rehabilitative component rather than the punitive component of punishment. One of these initiatives is styled restorative justice, where the inquiry is not necessarily at the conduct of the delinquent which has caused the conflict with the law, but the undercurrents, the factors that may have precipitated the circumstances that led to the delinquent 
person being in the conflict, being in conflict with the law. The theory is that practically if you don't address the root cause and you inflict a punishment of imprisonment and the root cause is a societal factor, perhaps resident in the abode or the dwelling, and the delinquent is charged and convicted, serves the sentence, and upon completion of service of sentence, goes back to the nest that created the problem in the first place, then there is a high likelihood that that person will be back in the prison within a short period of time. Restorative justice is intended to find that root problem. And this, as I said, is new in Guyana, and we have completed training in the education system with our teachers, so it's going to start in the school system. We have done training at the community level right across the country, and it is an ongoing exercise. We have trained the Amerindians, the village leaders, the Tushaus, and we have done training at the level of the regional leadership across our 10 administrative region, and as I said, that is a work in progress. We are still traveling the regions to do the training, and we are training trainers to do these trainings as well. So this concept, as of Monday, when the bill is passed and when His Excellency assents to it, will become, for the first time, a permanent feature in our criminal justice system. So that's one important feature of the collaboration between these two programs. On that bill as well, on that order paper as well, is the amendment to the Narcotics Act. Perhaps a vexed question, but something that we have to address if we want to stop putting our young people in particular into the prison system for a protracted period of time for possession of small quantity of marijuana. As I said, this particular piece of lawmaking has evoked widespread reaction of a disparate and different nature, some of them competing, some coinciding, based upon the different facet of society, the different belief system, the different type of social orientation the organizations or the persons are aligned with. As a, as a government, and in keeping with the objectives of these programs, we have to strike that delicate balance. And that is what our, our intervention in that piece of legislation seeks to do. So the rest of the Caribbean, for example, decriminalized marijuana, small quantities of marijuana. We don't pass legislation as a government in isolation. We believe in a consultative process. And we went to the people and we engaged all the facets of society. Of course, you have some segments want to smoke as much ganja as possible. You have the other extremity where they don't want, it, it must remain a crime with the heaviest of penalty. And then you have the middle ground. So we have to strike that balance. And that balance is reflected in the bill that will be debated on the floor of the assembly come Monday. That is, it is still a criminal offense 
but we have removed the custodial sentence from 30 grams and below. So if you are found with 30 grams and below, you will be charged. The penalty, however, will not be imprisonment. Now 30 grams and below, the penalty is a, 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 a sentence between three to five years. It now will be community service from 15 to 30 grams and from 15 below counseling. And that is the type of balance that we have to strike if we want to implement laws to govern the lives of people and we want their consent. An important part of lawmaking is to pass laws that meet the aspirations of the people. You can't impose from the time you put a law that the people don't support, it becomes an imposition, enforcement becomes a nightmare. An important legislative adjunct to support this program, reference was made to it, is, do, is, is legislation to deal with domestic violence, interpersonal violence, familial violence. We have a Domestic Violence Act which we passed since 1996. It has simply been overtaken by events. A new one is now under construction. My sister colleague in the Ministry of Human Services, Dr. Vindya Prasad, is leading that initiative. It will be, when it's finished, the most modern expression of that type of legislation in the Caribbean. And a consultative process will begin in relation to that piece of legislation because it's going to be, it will have concepts in it that are completely new. The current ones, the current system that we have, the current domestic violence legislation, doesn't have the type of penal component which this one has. That one has a more civil orientation basis. This one has both. The proposed bill that is coming has both. Police can make orders under this new legislation when they come face to face with domestic violence. Under the current legislation, you have to go to a magistrate and it's treated not as a criminal offense, but as a civil wrong. We have learned after 30 years and what the experience has taught us, we are now improving in this new dispensation. And then there are many other pieces of legislation. For example, the bail bill is a product, again, of the program that is aligned with this one being administered by the Ministry of Legal Affairs. And that bill also, history making again, we never had a bail bill in Guyana. Bail has always been a vexed question. Some people believe that bail is exercised, the power to grant bail is exercised too leniently. Some believe that it's exercised irrationally, arbitrarily, capriciously. What this bill is intended to do is to circumscribe that discretion regulate that discretion in accordance with established written principles and factors that are now in the legislation 
and not to the whim, fancy, and caprice of any adjudicator vested with the power and jurisdiction to deal with the question of bail. Clear processes of how you move forward after bail is refused or granted, empowering both the victim and the state as well as the offender to appeal or to review a decision that he or she may be aggrieved by in respect of bail. What type of offenses shall attract the grant of bail by a police officer at police stations across this country is now going to be made very clear. Many times we have complaint against, again, wrongful or abusive exercise of power when it comes to bail at police stations. Some people believe that bail should not be granted. Some people believe that bail should be granted. And the policeman in the current legal context has a huge power. And once you have wide discretionary power, the wider the discretionary power, the greater the likelihood of abuse. Once you begin to narrow that and circumscribe it and put into the law factors that will now regulate that power, you will have consistency consistency when it comes to the exercise of discretion. We also are helping this program with the provision of hardware. So we have already donated to the Guyana Police Force some 170 pieces of computers and printers. Next week, we will donate to the Guyana Prison Service a large number of computers as well, which we hope that will be used both by inmates, largely by inmates, and also by the prison administration. We are working, or we have worked, and there is in existence now a management system which links the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, the Judiciary, the Police Force, and the Guyana Prison Service, and allow access to information, and I believe the Human Service Ministry too, in particular the Probation Department. It allows this constellation of agencies to collaborate electronically and to share important data in relation to persons who are the subject of the criminal justice system. So you want the character of a person who is before the court to take that into account before sentence is passed that information would be in a database. The magistrate or judge, as the case may be, or the probation officer doesn't have to go for the first time and do a case study. That information, once you have interacted with the system before, we're not going to profile people. Once you have interacted with the system before, your personal information is going to be kept in an institutional system of course, there will be confidentiality, etc. But important stakeholders in the criminal justice system can use that information in the administration of justice or in the execution of their statutory duties.